Hello, everyone. Uh, today we are, if you've been with us for a while, we have been going through the Japanese basics lessons in Renshu. And today is the first lesson of what we call the N5 or the beginner Japanese. Now, uh, just to be clear, all the stuff we've done up until now also was included in N5. But because the N5, if you don't know what that is, there's a test called the JLPT or the Japanese Language Proficiency Test. And for better or worse, it is the main proficiency test in Japan that everyone uses to see how, how good your Japanese is. And the N5 is the easiest level, but it is also, for many people, the most daunting level because you're going from zero to you know quite a lot of Japanese for the first test. And so in Renshu, we've split it into two halves. We've got the Japanese basics, which is basically taking you from zero. And then today we're jumping into the second half of that, which is beginner Japanese. And over the coming months, we'll be going through these. Once we're done with them, you will be at a spot where you can take the JLPT N5 and, you know, should be able to do a pretty good job at it. So let's jump in. As I mentioned before, I am screencasting uh, my Renshu page. And if you have any questions about anything I say, type them out in the channel right then. But there's not an official question time that you just save your, uh, save your questions for. Just type them out. And we always have a bunch of different level people in here. We have beginners. We have more intermediate people that are just here to help. We're here to review. And uh, someone or myself will be happy to answer your question. So let's get started. We are jumping into uh, adverbs today. And I know some people, uh, like myself, when I was younger, aren't a fan of grammar terms. You know, you, you, you like the words, but you don't like thinking about them in a technical sense. But we're going to talk about adverbs today. And adverbs basically, in general, uh, they affect two things, verbs or other adjectives. But they change, you know, the, the way that the, the verb acts, the action acts. And one of the most common ones we use are frequency adverbs. And so if you say, I study Japanese, you know, the word study doesn't suggest how much or how little you study. You know, we have no idea. And an adverb, such as the ones that I'm going to throw up on the screen, the ones we're talking about today are yoku, taite, tokidoki, amari, betsuni, and zenzen. We've got a bunch of them. These all help describe are you studying every day? Are you studying just a little bit? Are you rarely studying? They're extremely useful words. And uh, with these, we're going to talk about each way to use them. Some of them are going to introduce this new concept in Japanese, probably new to you, in which Japanese uses a bit of backwardsness to explain things. And your, your brain might melt a little bit when you first see it, but it comes up a lot in Japanese. And so we're going to help you, you know, help you go through that. And so let's jump in. Now, we're going to group it into two different categories, uh, positive frequencies and negative frequencies. And when I say positive, I don't mean good and with negative bad. Uh, you'll see what I mean uh, once we actually see some examples. But positive frequencies, you know, talk about uh, how much you do something. If you think of how much as positive and how little as negative, you'll, you'll see these link together. And the way that the sentences are structured, uh, or rather the verbs are conjugated, you'll see another, another way it links up. And just for the person in Discord, it's having trouble seeing the uh, screen. Sometimes we've had it where if you leave and come back, it, it helps out. If you just close out your app completely, uh, your Discord, and then jump back in, it's definitely helped people in the past. So give it a shot. We'll still be here. Okay, so let's look at these three verbs, or adverbs, excuse me. Yoku, taite, and tokidoki. I bet you've probably heard yoku and tokidoki before. In fact, tokidoki is probably stuck in your head because it's got that nice sound to it, uh, tokidoki. That's kind of fun to say. Now, there's many more verbs or adverbs that we can use. Uh, these are the three that we're going to focus on 
you know, for now. Now, the thing with adverbs is that they can kind of go in different places in Japanese sentences. Adverbs are one of the more fluid uh, word types in Japanese, so where you can put it here, you can put it there. Sometimes it changes the sentence ever so slightly. Sometimes it doesn't change it at all. And so we're going to show you some examples of different places they can go. But especially if this is brand new to you, I don't want you to worry about, am I putting it in the right place in the sentence? Oh my goodness, I'm going to put it in the wrong place. And it's going to completely change the meaning and I'm going to make a fool of myself. That's not going to happen. At, at worst, it might be the slightest change in nuance. But it's really not something you need to worry about. Just be aware of that this happens. So we're going to jump straight into examples. And let's take a look at the first one. Yoku, I'm going to type it out in the channel, means often. Or, you know, you, you might think of it as frequently. But often is the one that we most uh, we see most often. And it is actually the adverb form of yoi, which is good. It doesn't really mean good in this sense, but it means often. So if we look at the sentence, Watashi wa yoku nihongo benkyo shimasu. If we take that yoku out of there, we're just saying I study Japanese, which you all do. But if we're thinking, how often do I study Japanese? Well, I study it often. Or maybe a bit more casually, I study it a lot. Then this yoku works really, really well. Now, we're going to practice it in just a second. But let me give you an example of that word um, of taking that yoku and kind of moving it around. So let me show you a few more examples. What is something, for those of you that have been uh, with me for a while, or you've probably seen this on your own, what's, what's the deal with watashi wa at the beginning of that sentence? What is something you can do with watashi wa? Any ideas? Yeah, you can usually omit it. You can usually drop it. Not always. You know, you might need to mention it if someone else, if you were talking to somebody else and they said, you know, I never study Japanese. And you want to say, well, I do. And you're drawing a contrast with the other person. Then you might want to put it in there. But you often can drop it, as several people are saying. So this sentence would be totally okay. Now, in the channel, since I can't put furigana, I'm going to use just for now, I'm going to use just the uh, hiragana, but I'll space the words out. So, uh, yoku nihongo benkyo shimasu would be fine. Now, you could also do this. If you remember from the previous page, you said you can also put it right in front of the verb. You can put it right in front of the verb. So, nihongo yoku benkyo shimasu, this is also completely okay. See how that yoku jumped from one spot to the other? So the way that I like to think of it, oh, and there's one more, excuse me. If we had the subject in there or the topic, uh, let me drop that for now, excuse me. So if we look at the sentence, then here's the way I usually see these adverbs and where to, uh, where to put them. So this is basically dropping the subject Looking at the verb, there's usually there's usually a verb, of course, and then before the verb, you know, there's all those particles that we've learned up until now. You might be talking about the what you're doing, you know, the direct object. You might be talking about when or where or with whom, and so you often have a whole bunch of of these particle pairs. When I say particle pairs, I might say it could be, for example, the one that's in the sentence, Nihongo. Uh, you might be talking about who you study with, Tomodachi to. You might be talking about where you study uh, at school. I, call, I, I consider this a particle pair because it's the particle and then the word that's helping. 
So if we drop those down to, we just call them PP for particle pair, you know, you have one, one or more, or sometimes none, but you might have a whole bunch in the sentence. So you might say, you have a whole bunch. So where does this particle go? The particle could go here. It could go at the very front, and that's in front of all those verb helpers, all those particle pairs. It could go at the very front, or you can drop it right, right in front of the verb, like that. Now, if we go back to the two uh, sentences I put before, and now don't worry, we're not going to focus on a single sentence this long for everything else. It's just since this is the first one, let's talk about it a bit. If we look at these, there is a slight nuance change, and let me just mention it. You know, the first one says, I, I often study Japanese. The second one, you're, it sounds more like you are stressing that you study it a lot, maybe in comparison to, say, speaking it. Where that Nihongo part doesn't change, maybe the sentence before saying, you know, I never speak Japanese, but I study it a lot. And with those two sentences, they both have Japanese, but you're focusing on the a lot part, on the study, the action. But again, can you hear how that is just a really slight nuance? It is. And so should you worry as a beginner? You should not. You'll never say one or the other, and then the, the person listening to you says, wait, that adverb's in the wrong place. Do you really know Japanese? You know, they're not going to think that. They're going to say, wow, well, your Japanese is amazing. So don't worry about the, the difference between those two. So let's come back to yoku. Yoku means often. It also has a few other meanings, but we're not going to worry about those today. It means often. Let's look at the second sentence. Haite, which is not quite as common. I don't hear it that often. Uh, taite means usually. Now you might think that that sounds really similar to often. So what's the difference? Yoku is talking about a number. You know, it's talking about many times. Taite, however, is a percentage. So if you say usually, for example, in this sentence, taite kuji ni you know, you're saying that of all the time, you know, maybe at nine o'clock, or it sounds like you're having tea, and you usually, when do you usually have the tea? At nine o'clock. So maybe 80% of the time, you have tea at nine o'clock. But sometimes you have it at, you know, at eight o'clock. Or two in the morning, who knows? So tight day is focused more on the percentage, like I usually do this and not something else, where yoku just means, you know, often. And the person that posted a question just now, this is the right channel to post questions. That's great. And I don't, I don't think I left the O out, um, but you can drop it in more casual uh, in more casual speech. Since we're sticking to polite speech right now, I'm leaving the O in. But if I was speaking more casually, I could say Nihongo ben I might say Nihongo benkyo stereo, and you can drop it. But we're not the level where we, we jump into dropping particles. Uh, we will get there, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Lastly, uh, toki doki which is my, my favorite word in today's lesson, means sometimes. Now, what does sometimes mean in Japanese? There's not, there's not a specific number. Um, does that mean 20% of the time, once a month, once a week? Who knows? It's not that specific, but shimbun o tokidoki yomimasu. 
Again, we could take that tokidoki and put it at the top of the sentence. We could say tokidoki ie de shinbun o yomimasu. That would also be fine. Oh, I, I was hoping someone would ask that question. Now, this is kind of outside of the scope of the lesson, but because it's really cool, <laughs> I wanted to mention, I wanted to talk about it. And today it's a shorter lesson, so perfect. Uh, most of you, if you're looking at my screen, um, you can uh, see that second, that second little character. This little weird thing that looks like someone was starting a kanji and then they just gave up. And I actually, I, I feel like I knew it, but I don't know it at the moment. I can't, I can't pop it out of my head. If someone else can, uh, if it is the repeater, but there's a, there's a specific word for it. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what, what it's called. Wrench is telling me it's called a noma. Yes. But because you never use it by itself, um, you don't really need to know what that's called. But for those of you that don't know what it is, uh, it's not katakana. And basically what it is, is that there's not a lot, there's not a lot, but there's some characters where if technically this is, you know, this is the actual word is tokidoki. It's the same kanji twice. And basically that second one means, hey, the kanji before that, it's that's the same one here. So it's, it's a repetition mark showing it can't be used for anything else. You can't use it for hiragana or katakana, but there's there are a number of words that have it in there where it says, oh, you know, this is copying the kanji before it. And to answer the other questions, uh, tokidoki, I always translate it as sometimes. I do not translate it as seldom or rarely. That's not correct. And you'll see the ones that seldom or rarely uh, fit into. Those fall into what I call the negative frequencies, and we'll get to those in just a minute because they're structured in a different way. So as I noted before, positive frequencies is focusing on how often something is done. Now, before we continue, uh, let's practice this a little bit. And let's jump up to, oops, went too far. Let's jump up to this top one. Now, when I say practice, so what, what's actually going to happen is there's 25 of us in the channel right now. Not all 25 people have to practice. If you want to practice, you get to, and I hope you do. Uh, I won't call out and say, hey, so-and-so, you really should be practicing. None of that happens. But this is a great place to practice. Uh, you're amongst learners, and as learners, we understand every, one another's fears, like uh, making a mistake, feeling embarrassed. But here in Discord, we're not. there's not a classroom, a physical classroom, where everyone's going to turn around and look at you if you make a mistake kind of say, oh my goodness, I can't believe they made that mistake. That's not going to happen. So we'll be able to help correct your Japanese if you make mistakes. And there's none of that sense of, of embarrassment. At least I don't think there is. So I hope you practice. And by doing so, just or to do so, just type into the text channel. That's all you have to do. And But if you don't want to, if you just want to see everyone else practicing, that's all you have to do. Very easy. So. Let's take, let's take the yoku. Let's practice on that one. So often. So let's think about something you do often. Something you do often. Uh, it could be listen to music. It could be read manga. It could be sleep. <laughs> it could be study Japanese and uh, let us know. Now, one rule, only one rule. I see some people typing, uh, listen to my rule. Uh, don't use kanji. Or if you use kanji, please put the hiragana version afterwards. This is a beginner level. We've got some people that haven't touched kanji at all. And we want to make it so everyone can take advantage of what you're writing. Now, can you type, uh, can you type like this? 
in Romaji? Sure. There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't have the Japanese installed or you're just feeling uh, tired and you don't want to deal with the, um, the Japanese IME, that's cool. Type uh, in Hiragana, type in Romaji. And if you want to say something, it's like, I want to say this. How do I say it? Tell us. Uh, let us know. And we will help you out. So I'll give you a couple minutes for people to uh, type out uh, their answers. And I'm going to read. I usually can't read all of them, but I'll, I'll read as many as I can. Uh, one person is talking about uh, going back to the moon frequently. I guess they're a moon man or moon woman, moon person. Someone else uh, looks at uh, YouTube often. Another person looks at One Piece. Someone else often takes walks, sample. And I like that people are putting the yoku in different places. Some of you are putting it at the top of the sentence in front of all those particle pairs. Some of you are putting it right before the verb, and those are both great. Someone else reads books often, good for you. Someone else is a fan of rice. Someone else plays games. Now I'm going to point this sentence out. The person has said that they play games a lot. Yoku game wo shimasu. That's correct. And they didn't make the mistake that a lot of people make, which is if you play games, you don't you don't do this, the one I just typed out. Let me find my little, I can't find my X marks. I'll use that. Game o asobu is a, is a literal translation. And those are usually pretty dangerous. You don't play a game. Asobu is just to play, you know, like run around and play. To play a game, literally you're actually doing the game. And so game o shimas is the correct way of saying it. Poetry uh, is written the same way that uh, death is. <laughs> she, <laughs> the kanji is different. But if you, I'm just going to take a guess. If you write poetry, you could say something like this. She o Do remember that when you have no, you know, that the particle no, the thing that you're talking about always comes last. And then all the extra information that you're talking, you're adding to it comes before that. So if you have a game, you know, game will shimas, right? You're, you're playing the game. What kind of game? It's a game on my smartphone or a smartphone game. That's extra information. The extra information always comes before in the same way that you would say smartphone game or fun game in, in English. We put all the modifiers before the noun. Aisu is a, not i. And interestingly enough, in Japan, uh, most people don't say ice cream. Uh, they just say ice. <laughs> and aisu doesn't mean ice as in a block of ice. They have a different word for that. But when they say aisu, they're referring to ice cream. Okay, I'm amazed at how many sentences we got. Uh, much more than usual, which is awesome. Thank you, guys. Let's try. Let's try one more before we continue. It's a short lesson today, uh, so let's um, let's try a bit more. Taite, I'm gonna skip. And tell me something that uh, you do sometimes. Tell me something that you do sometimes. And. This is something that might sound strange from coming from a teacher, but uh, you should lie if you want to. 
You know, when we're doing language practicing, the goal is not to get to know one another or to share your true identity. The goal is to practice the language. And so if you want to say something silly, like someone said much earlier, they said, I often return to the moon. And I'm, I'm guessing they don't go to the moon. It's just a guess. Then go for it. Sometimes lying for the purpose of learning helps you break out because you know, our lives are kind of normal. Most of us, we do the same thing every day. But if you want to say something crazy, like sometimes I fight Godzilla, then that gives you something that you'll remember. And the language you, you remember, because it's silly, is what's going to stick in your head. So for me, this is actually true, although I kind of wish it was not true. Um, <laughs> Tokidoki pokeka o kaimasu. Any guesses as to what pokeka is a abbreviation for? Yes. Pokemon. Poke comes from Pokemon, and then Ka is, comes from Kado. And I don't play, I don't have anyone to play with, but I like collecting them. And my, my kids love them. They're, young, they're uh, five and seven years old. So I try to get a box of each new set that comes out, which is tricky in Japan because they're crazy popular in Japan. Uh, for those of you that are writing in kanji and putting the hiragana after it, thank you. I really appreciate that. What's my favorite Pokemon? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I'm i kind of an old school person. And so let me tell you this. When we visited the Pokemon Center in Tokyo a few weeks ago, I was looking for two plushies. I wanted Psyduck. And I wanted Magikarp. Those were the two that I really wanted to get plushies of, and they didn't have them, so I was, I was quite dismayed. Magikarp just flopping around on the ground, almost out of breath. Best thing in the world. And then Magikarp's and Psyduck's appearances in the recent uh, Netflix series, Pokemon Concierge, it was so good. It was surprisingly good. And if you have Netflix and you haven't seen that yet, it's it's a fun show. It's just you feel good. Your heart feels warm watching it. Okay, enough talk about Pokemon. Let's get back to the Japanese. Uh, thank you, everyone, for writing the sentences. I didn't have a chance to um, read them all because someone distracted me with Pokemon questions. But uh, let's keep going. We're actually going to move on to the harder half of this lesson. So, we talked about positive frequencies. We're going to talk about negative frequencies. And this is these are used to talk about how rarely or how infrequently you do something. And there's three we're going to talk about. Amari, Betsuni, and Zenzen. Amari means, means not much. Betsuni means not particularly. And Zenzen means never. If you look at those just by themselves, uh, it's not uh, it's not too bad. But you're going to see this word here, negative. It has a really special meaning here. Okay, let's look at this first sentence. Ignore everything else on the page. Let's just look at this first sentence. I'm going to type out in the channel as well. Amari goji ni okimasen. Now remember, amari, as I just said, it means, you know, not often, or not much, or not really. So I don't, usually, I don't often wake up at 5 o'clock. Question. Do I wake up at 5 o'clock sometimes? Anyone? Do 
do I wake up at five o'clock sometimes? Based on that sentence. Okay, I have several people saying yes or hi. That's correct. So some of you have question marks popping up above your heads. So this is an action I do. I do wake up at five o'clock sometimes. I'm not happy when it happens, but I do. So why is the sentence negative? You know, if you were to look at the sentence like this, let me show you a slightly different version. If I say this, goji ni okimasen, this means I don't wake up at five. I just, I don't, I never, I never wake up at five. I don't wake up at five. However, that amari putting put in the front of it means that I do wake up sometimes at five. It's just not often. The rule here is that when you use these negative frequencies, the verb must be in the negative. Otherwise, it's grammatically incorrect. It's not a preference. It's not something you can change. It has to be negative. So uh, let me give you a few more examples. So I'm, I'm American, but I live in Japan. But I like to go back to the US when I can. Now, it's, it's hard to do so. Tickets are expensive. It's far away, jet lag, all that stuff. So I would say, Amari America ni kaerimasen. But I do go back to America sometimes. Not rare, not often, but sometimes. However, in Japanese, I must use, if Amari is sitting there at the front of the sentence, that negative form is going to sit there at the end of the sentence. That's the rule. And as your Japanese progresses, you're going to see this appear more and more often. It does come up in other situations where the negative verb is used to emphasize how little of something is or how little something is done. So you can think of it as it is adding emphasis, but I want to be clear, it is required. So if I type, if I type this out, If I can type it out. If I were to walk up to someone in Japan and just out of the blue, I said, Amari America ni kaerimas, they would stop and stare at me. They'd say, Wait, what? What are you saying? What 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 do you mean? Amari Amari Kaerimas. It just it doesn't make sense. So with these negative frequencies, that's why we put that name on there. You need the negative verb as well. Let's take a look at a few more sentences. Watashi wa betsu ni chitensha ni norimasen. So maybe, you know, someone's asking you about how you get to school each day. And they're like, you ride a bike, right? And you say, well, not in particular. I mean, sometimes if I'm in a rush, I use a bike, but no, not really. No, I don't really ride a bike. But I do sometimes. It's not the times that I ride a bike, it is not zero. So with these two, Amari and Betsuni, the action does occur sometimes, but you need the negative verb. Fortunately, the last one, Zen Zen, which means never, this one, this one works out nicely. Tomato Zen Zen Tabemasen. I never eat tomatoes. So if you never eat tomatoes, okay, that makes sense. You would use the negative verb because you do it zero times. You never do it. And just uh, to loop back to what we were talking about before. You can do this as well. You could say, Zenzen tomato tabemasen. 
Remember, you can take that adverb and move it to the front if you want to. And that would work. But with Amari and Betsini, it, um, you need the negative form of the verb. And I'll show you a few more examples of that uh, in just a minute, but I'd like to practice this a little bit. So let's go back to the top. Go back to that first one, Amari. So uh, think about something that you don't do that often. And let me show you something before you type. Some of you are probably thinking, think, but don't type yet. Take a look at these two sentences, the two I typed up. Tokidoki goji ni yokimasu. Anmari goji ni yokimasen. Now, in terms of information, like how often I wake up, these two kind of mean the same thing. Both of them are saying, I don't wake up at 5 o'clock that often. The first one is focusing on that you do do it, though, sometimes. Uh, Tokidoki masen, no. You do not mix them up that way. So let me, real fast, it's it's sometimes hard to see these sentences. You know, you can say connotation, you know, and that, that helps, and it's true. But let me give you some examples. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to put these in English. So when will you use these? Okay, look at these. Say someone is, the English is someone talking to you. And they say, oh, wait a second, you don't wake up at five, right? Because, you know, they would expect you to not wake up at five. You are focusing on the, the yes to this. You're focusing on that you actually do sometimes wake up at five. Tokidoki goji ni yokimasu. I sometimes do wake up at five. The second one, both of these, let's say, tokidoki goji ni okimasu. Let's say once a week. You wake up once a week at 5 o'clock. So you say, tokidoki goji ni okimasu. Now the second one, you are trying, you know, someone waking up at 5 is normal, or they expect you to wake up at 5, and you're like, no, 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 this isn't normal. And they say, I usually wake up at 5. What about you? And you're like, no, not me. Amari goji ni yokimasen. No, I, I don't really wake up at 5. I don't often wake up at 5. So do you see how they provide a bit of contrast to what the other person is saying? The first one, they're thinking you don't at all. And you're like, no, it's not zero. I mean, it's sometimes. Whereas the second one, they wake up at five all the time. And you're like, no, 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 I don't wake up all the time. Just, just sometimes. The positive pushes it up. The negative pushes it down. I hope that helps some. But you'll, you'll get a feel for it the more you hear it. So uh, let's do some practice. Uh, tell me, what is something that you do not do that often? Let's use Amari. Don't forget, we want that negative verb at the end.
Kora, uh, if you're referring to Kora, it would be Kora, and not Koru. So some people are saying they don't, uh, they don't speak Japanese often. They don't drink cola often. They don't study with their friends that often, but they do sometimes. They don't drink coffee that often. They don't go to sleep at nine that often, but sometimes maybe they're really beat and they do go to sleep at nine. I'll give you about one more minute. Drink in general or drink the noun is nomi mono as in like a drink. Uh, I'd like a drink, please. Drink, the verb is nomu, but to not drink, since we're sticking with the negative, or not drink that much, would be nomimasen. All right, I'll give you about 30 more seconds for people that are uh, typing out their answers. So with the last sentence that came up, it, it's not wrong, but just in terms of word choice, uh, Jisho, which is dictionary, you don't usually say that you read it or don't read it. Uh, we usually use the verb to use, tsukao. So if you don't use the dictionary that often, you might say jisho tsukaimasen, or amari. Put the amari in the front, of course. Yomu implies more of a sit down and says, okay, today I'm going to read pages 10 through 25 of the dictionary, and you kind of go through, you go through it. Hiku, I don't hear as much, but then to be honest, I don't hear people talking about dictionaries, you know, <laughs> much at all. It doesn't come up in conversation. Uh, TV and Katakana, you need to type this out. Oh, but switching the hiragana up to Katakana is tricky depending on which keyboard you're using. Okay. As uh, a few more people are winding up uh, with their with their examples, I want to jump through. There's a few more slides on here that I wanted to mention, and I want to give you a few extra bits of information. We already talked about that, but yeah, uh, the way that Renshu mentions it is oh my button's not working. Okay, <laughs> is that that negative part is. Um, it's used to emphasize how rarely it's done. And the person that just, oh, you won't be able to hear. Yes, but maybe not immediately. So we were talking about verbs today, but you've probably heard, especially with these negative verbs, um, you've heard these used with adjectives as well. So let's, uh, for example, we were talking about Pokemon before. And, you know, if we were talking about which uh, Pokemon you like or dislike, you know, and because it has an amazing name, uh, 
Magikarp, which is Koi King. <laughs> Koi Kingu. If you said, you know, I like I like Magikarp, you'd say Koi King wa suki desu. Now let's say if you're crazy and you don't like Magikarp. You might say something like this. Koi king wa suki dewa nai desu. Or you might say, you know, and there's different ways of saying no. You might say ja arimasen for the end. But we can use that amari just like we did before. So what if you like Magikarp just a little? It's like I don't like Magikarp that much. But I like it a little. You could you could use the amari. You could say something like this. Amari koi kingo wa suki ja arimasen. So, if we're talking about how much you like something from 0 to 100, and 0 is no like, and 100 is completely in love, you know, this person might be a 15. They like Koi King a little bit, but they would still use that negative form, because you're emphasizing how little you like them. And of course, if you don't like it at all, we can use... You can say something like Zenzen Koi King wa suki ja arimasen. It's the same Zenzen as before, not at all. Now, uh, one last thing before we end today's lesson. I wanted to point something out. This is more casual Japanese. But I wanted to mention it because I know how when you're learning Japanese, you want to sometimes say something casually. You're like, I want to chop it down and say two words and have that be a whole sentence. And I want to mention something with betsuni. Uh, betsuni, when used in a whole sentence like we had before, for example, let's see, let me give you an example. If you said something like this, I don't go to the library in particular. You know, I don't make a point of it, but sometimes I go. This is okay. However, often you'll hear, you know, if you're reading manga or watching TV or listening to uh, VTubers, you'll hear people respond to questions with simple answers. You know, if someone says, hey, do you like Koi King? They might say, Zen Zen, not at all, you know, and you know what comes after Zen Zen, it has to be the negative form. Or they might say, they might say, Amari, you know, not really. However, Betsuni is not something you should typically use by itself. As to why, it carries that not particularly meaning. However, it can often sound very dismissive as well. So for example, let's say you're talking to someone and they ask you this. They say, sushi wa suki desu ka? And actually, let's, let's say you're probably speaking more casually. So they might say something like this, sushi wa suki? And you answer with this. You answer with betsu ni. By saying that, not only are you saying, I don't particularly like it, but it, it can often carry the nuance of not only you're rejecting the question, but you're rejecting the conversation. It, it sounds like you're saying in English, if someone says, hey, do you like sushi? Yeah, I guess, and whatever. It's got that dismissive feel to it. So it's it's almost as if you're saying no, but you're also saying no to the person. It's like, don't talk to me. Now, it doesn't always mean that, but it can. And so I usually say, I, I never say, that's me by itself. I just, you know, there's there's no reason to say it. Um, you can say other things because it could 
be seen negatively by the other person. And you don't want to do that, I hope. So uh, please be careful with that. One more thing. Uh, we actually had a full hour of uh, the event, but one more little fun thing. We talked about Amari earlier. Does anyone know what the casual form of that is? Or rather, the spoken form. Oh, you do. Good, good, good. So we both, just like in English, you know, in English, when you want to emphasize something, you often hold on to the pronunciation for like, uh, for example, you know, I really like something compared to I really like something. I re and that re is longer. You know, I'm making it longer and it shows emphasis. Um, it It's partly that, but partly it's also easier to see uh, or to say amari versus amari because that n that's in there helps it almost kind of bridges the gap between those two sounds so instead of having an a ah and a ma that kind of sit away from each other that n is is it kind of links them together it has more of a, a flow to it amari now if you are listening to me say amari and amari and thinking i can't hear the difference between those two that's fine uh, for beginning uh, beginning speakers or beginning learners, if you can't hear the small things or you can't hear that double consonant sometimes, it comes in time. It does. I promise. It took me in um, it, when I was learning in university, it took me a month to hear the difference between this, actually more than a month. To hear the difference between this and this, su and su, they sounded exactly the same to my ear for quite some time uh, before they before they split out. Anyway, um, the question that came up with wa versus ga is is it's a big question actually, and I might be able to talk about it for a minute after this is done. But uh, let me wrap this lesson up. And uh, thank you everyone for coming. If you have questions feel free to keep asking them uh, this video will go up inside of discord and inside of Renshu if you don't know where they are in Renshu let me show you under resources now I'm using the website but in the app it's the same spot under resources Japanese lessons if you jump in there call John go oh and I got a new level great and we are in the first lesson right here frequency words so later today the little video icon will appear next to frequency words and that will be our video so you can come back and look at this uh whenever you want thank you so much for joining us and i hope you see you i hope to see you next time bye